Hello, everybody. Welcome inside IIM. How are you guys doing? It's uh, almost what 15 days to go for CAT, and we thought that it was important to talk about the mindset of a CAT topper. And I know that you're not there yet, you're on your journey and you want to become one. But learning from how CAT toppers think and how they face challenges, how they overcome the little problems that are in the preparation could be helpful. It could give you a map, it could give you um template to think about those things if you find it helpful use it otherwise uh, throw it away it's completely fine so with me today i have varnik and some of you might have um, heard her story on inside i in that story, she talks about her journey in the her, her cat attempts and finally she made it to i she's a student there right now very happy she's completed a semester recently but back to her um today we'll talk about how she thought oh uh, is my voice breaking a little yeah okay did you understand what i was saying <laughs> yeah i was able to get it okay give me one sec is this any better oh uh, yeah thank you for your approval <laughs> i will <laughs> So I'll put across uh, without further ado the first question for today, Varnika, which is um, it's October now and a lot of parents would feel pressured uh, because they wouldn't meet their goals or they would have some areas of weakness or wouldn't score their score. Many challenges in different forms. Just want to get a broad sense of your head when you were preparing and you had all these similar challenges. How did you think about it? So going a year or a two year or two years back, I remember that by this time I had a fair idea of where I was lagging. So the questions that I was I had worked upon but were not showing very uh, fruitful results. I knew that I, there's not much time for me to work upon those from the scratch. So it made more sense to make my uh, already strong areas much stronger rather than working on the weak areas at this moment. So I won't recommend doing more mock tests at this point because it's only going to get overwhelming and you will be faced, you will be, you know, thrown with a lot of questions that you're not familiar with and that will only demotivate you. So right now is the time to analyze your previous mocks and get a fair share of understanding as to where you were lagging. And uh, all throughout your preparation, you must have noticed some weak, weak points and you must have worked on them. So it's time for you to recollect all those concepts so that whatever you have worked on, you just don't lose out in the essence of time. So that would be one recommendation. And secondly, would be not to pressurize yourself too much. I understand that by this time, everybody is like their entire preparation is at stake. And it's a do or die situation. Like you don't know what will happen on the exam day. So it makes more sense for you not to think about that right now and just keep working as you have been working all throughout your preparation. Awesome. Uh, thanks for that. And um, so diving a little, I have follow-up questions on everything that you said. Let me start with uh, the beginning, which is um, not to focus on areas that weren't so strong. Basically, uh, really put in, you didn't put in a lot of time on as you knew by now weren't your strong suit. And um, if, like we're doing that, basically, that would mean in a sectional or in a mock, we're consistently sort of leaving out certain topics no, we're not good at. So would you say that, um, you know, developing a basic understanding of these picks to boost our scores if they, they're stagnating for a lot of people would be for or simply making sure we don't make takes in the topics we know best uh, should be priority? Okay, so for that question, I would say that by now, you already have a basic understanding of your weaknesses and strengths. So if you think that the weak points that you are uh, no, that you know of, and the questions that might come from that topic are simple and are just formula based, then you can work on it. But if they're advanced level, and you think that it will take you much time to understand the concept and then build on it to answer tricky questions, it wouldn't make sense to work on that now. So priority wise, definitely your strengths should be one first and you should always be working to ensure that no matter how the, uh, how hard the question gets, you're able to crack it through. And then second priority should be the weak areas where the questions might come easy and it's totally formula based and just one read go through, then it's worth doing it. Otherwise, it's not. Got it. Thanks. And um, now I really want to ask the personal bits. What were times and also uh, to the viewers, I will live questions shortly so uh, be patient while we do and we'll make your answer 
now um running back to you when you were preparing for the first time and so tell me about times when you felt really low during your preparation what were the when did you feel so and why did you feel so low and how did you get out of it so uh, very honestly during my first year of preparation while i was still working and appear and hoping to appear for a uh, cat so during that time it was a big challenge for me to take out time after my office hours so my work would usually start from 12 in the morning to 8 30 9 in the night and it would become really difficult because i have to you know get um, make food by myself and uh, do extra course as well so it was really difficult for me to take out time and usually weekends was the one uh, weekends were the time when i used to study and uh, during the last like um, around august sometime i remember that i felt really low because i would i was not scoring well in mocks and i was not able to do some especially uh, dilr portion so i thought that i was fluent in logical reasoning but i was so afraid of uh, so afraid of di that i didn't even attempt it so th- that was <laughs> that was a very tough part for me because i was very weak in it and i was not even working on it and i don't i didn't have enough time for it. so that was a major challenge that i faced in 2019 and to overcome it i realized that only i'll have to go up front and you know face the challenge so even though those numbers were very scary for me and i wouldn't say that i was if it was like a moon shot for me to understand the complete di and perform well in the final exam but during that time onwards it was one weekend that i realized that i have to work on it and from that weekend onwards i made it a point that no matter like if i am doing five questions of uh, lr which is my strong part i do 10 questions of di on a daily basis so it was really uh, difficult in the beginning i sought help from my colleagues and my friends who were also preparing and were very fluent in it so we used to study regularly on it um, and if one goes and if one used to go weak the other used to you know pull him out like you have to study and all of it so that really helped and in the second year of my preparation like 2020 itself it was much more difficult considering that i had this benchmark in mind about 99.76 and then i wanted to score the same again and it was a difficult uh, task considering that cat is really unpredictable and also and, I, and when i got to know that the time duration has been reduced from 3 hours to 2 hours it was a ma- uh, mental challenge to say the least so it took me some time to adjust to that some mocks and some mental preparation before going to the actual exam so, yeah you know even at this point um, a lot of us were prepared ke time it's going to be a 2 hour exam we still had the little, little surprise the bomb that blasted which basically the number of questions would be lesser uh, than before even in the 2 hour and um, we've uh, we, so after that we got to research and we spoke to a lot of experts and cat toppers to understand what was it like uh, what would it be like for these people aspirants to cope up with it and we'll separate with you on that but i am just share that to um, it, uh, to share with you what you faced is similar to what aspirants here face that that little bit of chat i mean yours was much bigger but um, it's it's is obviously there i'll come to the next question which is uh, often when we are failing in uh, what whatever we pursue and to question ourselves and wonder you know we can is it possible can i score the 99.5 plus and um, if we disappointed by our preparation we may think not putting in enough time like you said you used to be busy and you would not give enough sometimes in those moments when you felt you needed more effort and you knew you needed to do more how did you a uh, sort of tell yourself that you will be able to do it i mean where does that that uh, that drive come from pushed you to actually make time and work harder what what going on inside your head during that time that was a wonderful question first of all thank you ashin <laughs> no secondly i'd say that there have been many times that one begins to doubt oneself and i have been there done that many a times as recently as the summer internship process so these these situations actually challenge you and you know make you think yourself if it's worth doing it and if all of this efforts will really translate into results or not and it's okay to think so because in hindsight now i feel that stressing so much was only only reduced my preparation time and only reduced my potential so if i had worked on that time instead of thinking too much because any which way we do not control the results so and talking about the second part uh, wherein how what drives you personally to work harder i'd say that i believe all throughout my life i believe that i have worked hard for my uh, achievements and all 
and if it's all relative so if you can work harder than the most of people out there it's a combination of intelligence and hard work at the end of the day and if you believe you can increase one variable you can definitely increase the whole equation so that is my driving force i believe that everybody has the same intelligence level but it ultimately depends on the hard work that one puts in and it's completely under your control if you want to work for 2 th hours or for 3 hours so that is a very controllable variable and you should you know just uh, take and uh, trick it thanks so much varnika see this is what gives perspective it could be other um, mindsets or things like you know what's going to happen what may happen or anything that kind of make you lose control of your preparation and that's what we were curious about like how do you take things and it seems like you take things in your hands and believe that if you actually do uh, more than everybody else does then you likely get results better than everybody else does and uh, that makes lot of sense and perhaps a lot of aspirants could absorb that and put in more effort then uh, they used to do at least they are we oh by the way so if you have to check out how many so what if everybody else is putting in versus what effort you you're putting in we'll help you do that we'll post some links um, that'll help you we've created this tool okay to help aspirants understand what is it going to be like so we'll put it out as well. um, anyway so coming back to our conversation um, so varnika around october when uh, were your mock scores stagnating were they growing what was it like for you in your first preparation so uh, during the first preparation i didn't do much mocks i was at this time so i was more focused on doing the advanced level questions because by then i knew that uh, even though i was able to crack the formula ones and the basic ones i was not able to understand the question like advanced level questions for di especially so those cubes and color problems and uh, <laughs> those really used to puzzle me out so i knew that i was lying there and i thought that giving mocks at this point will not make, you know bring much value addition to my preparation and therefore i was much focused on building those concepts in the last moment and if if i can ask how many mocks taken your first preparation do you remember not really uh, but i remember giving aim cats for like 5 to 10 times at least all right um at this point i'll take up a few live questions and then we'll go forward keshav has asked today start cat prep in my second year um what do you think varnika i'm sorry can you repeat the question yeah uh, there's keshav asking if he should start his cat prep in his second year of college so is it a two three year long program or a four year long program he like has even... shared that if you okay, could answer for both that it's a Three year or uh, long program, and he will be eligible for the exam next year. So I think yeah, it makes sense for him to pursue the preparation right now. And even if he doesn't get through in the first attempt, there will always be another year, and he can leverage his preparation from this year to next attempt. All right, yeah, that makes sense. Um, if uh, I, I'm not sure you can hear me, could you let me know? Is it my bad internet connection? Thank you. 
Hey Varnika, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, this is the best internet connection I've got at the moment. I'm really, really sorry for it. No worries. This is the Zoom world. I think we have now adapted to this. I, yes. I'm really sorry. I'll, um, just I'll come back to the live question, which was uh, asking. And thanks so much for your patience, everybody. Which is uh, Dev asking. He is hovering around 92-93 percentile uh, comparative to last three years. So how should I improve in months, especially since it is at 85 percentile level and my syllabus is complete? Voice is repeating. Uh, so, what did you say? Actually, what, just, what we just talked about, uh, just a second. Oh, you've answered it? No, 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 no. Let me, let me answer it. So yeah. Uh, I was saying that, just a second, let me take the question. Yeah. All right, so for quants particularly, I'd say that uh, if you know that you are lying somewhere, you just take out the type of questions and the concept that it's relating to, and you understand that at what level you are currently. So are you familiar with the concept? Do you remember the formulas? Do you understand the flow of the question? Do you understand what is to be done after reading the question? And if at any point you realize that you're lagging. So if you know that you're not remembering the formulas, try to understand, try to derive it once or twice, and then you will retain it. If you think that uh, you're not able to understand the procedure, like what is to be done after you read the question. So you have to refer to many solutions and you have to understand the thinking that goes and you know, you have to just write down figures as they come in the question. And so once you have made a map out of those uh, those figures, you at least you will understand that what is what is what should be the next step. So that should be the way you go about it. And once you once you do this for all of the type of questions that you're currently you know lagging behind in, uh, that will help you and at least push you across that chasm from 92 to 93 percent. All right, thanks, Varnika. Um, I'll go to the next question, which is uh, when attempting mocks, certain questions have two chapters combined or totally off the general. Uh, so, two different topics when one question comes off, basically. Should we be bothered about those? That's the question. So, you cannot really predict like what type of questions you will be facing and whether it will be just one chapter based or one formula based because ultimately it's a test of your concepts and ability. So, there are high chances that they'll do, uh, you know, combine different concepts from different chapters and ask you to answer it. So, if you're very clear with the concepts, that shouldn't bother you because ultimately, what ultimately all of the chapters that you're studying link together at some point. So you need to have that holistic understanding as to what connects to which other chapter and how. Um, the next question for you is, how do I analyze the quant section before I go to the next mock? Uh, suppose I'm getting very less questions, right? Majority of the questions are not attempted. The next mock, do I revise? What do I do to do better in the next mock, basically? So you, since you already mentioned that you're attempting few questions and not attempting a larger portion, I'd first recommend as to understand that why are you not recommend, why are you not attempting it? So at what point are you losing that contact? So you understand the question, you write initial equations and then you lose the contact. And then you don't, you will just, you know, get out of control as to what is the next step and how should I move forward? And you have to do this for all of the questions that you have not attempted. So make a list, understand that why did you not understand the next step and the, uh, you know, analyze the solution that why the solution is going in this, this direction and where was I going, understand the divergence and then you'll be able to, so next mock onwards, you should make a target that this time I left a question from algebra at this point, at least in the ne next uh, mock, I should be able to take it to the next step if not complete it. Got it, makes sense. Um... Uh, so, because uh, my internet is not uh, ideal today, and okay, next question slash comment is they're saying fix your internet first. I'm really sorry about it, man. Um, so, because internet is less than ideal, let's do it this way. I'll send you, so we'll send you the questions on Varnika, the live questions we get. You read, answer them, and um, let's take it that way. Yeah. Sure. Uh, for now, the next question uh, is why didn't uh, you defer your MA admission by fun. I, I think this is not for today. I'll go to the next one. Have you answered the question where he was asking you how to how to momentum for preparation? Uh, 
Uh, no, I have not. So, do, you, do you want to share your thoughts on it? So, Somna is curious, how do I have, how does he build the momentum basically for his preparation? So, assuming, uh, when is the paper for this year scheduled? Like somewhere in uh, late October, right? Totally, yeah. So, yeah, since it's just a month left for the final exam, I think it's high time that, you know, you have that excitement and, um, you know, willingness to take the paper. Because no matter how much you have prepared in the last moment, it, it just becomes a game of your excitement and uh, willingness. Because the more excited you will be, the more, you know, the more uh, slower you will lose your confidence. So if in the first, if while uh, giving the exam, you're already very anxious and fearful about what will happen, whether I'll be able to do the questions or not. And if the first question comes and you're not able to crack it, then your confidence will go like exponentially down. So it's very important to have that positive and, you know, fresh thinking that today I'll be taking an entirely new exam and I'm very excited to go about it. So uh, one month before the exam, you should be working hard on changing your mentality on the final day. Because it's obvious that you'll be under a lot of pressure and you'll, you have worked hard for it. So it will be very important for you to perform well. But at the same time, you should be excited about it. Itself. Should I go about the next question? So I'll take this. How to rigid about preparation in one go for prep? Is this what we answered? So we'll go to the next one, which is, can you share your schedule of how much time you put in for cat prep? It feels impossible to spend time for cat during weekdays. I can't see this question. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll make sure you see it. Right? Yeah, okay. So yeah, I know it's really difficult to spend uh, fine time during week days, considering that we have a lot on hand, and uh, and also since if you're working, so that also makes it much more challenging than it already is. So I would say that you should have a very you know clean and fair understanding that you have to take out two hours out of your day. So as you keep uh, your work scheduled for the other hours of the day, you have to make sure that this is one of them. And no matter how much you feel like, you know, lazing around and giving up on it, be just trim it down to 30 minutes, but make it a habit of at least 30 minutes each day. Because on the first day you skip the 30 minutes, it seems very okay to you that next day onwards I'll continue this. And the second day also you feel like I have already, you know, studied this much, I need not put in 30 minutes each day so in not in in order to not cultivate that mentality you have to keep putting in 30 minutes if not more right uh, so next question i'm a cat 2022 test taker should i prepare for VAT process from now only if not good at writing and i don't write regularly so again i'd say that VAT process is something into future so do not waste much of your time uh, thinking about that right now because uh, it's also because last year as well not many colleges took VAT because it was an online process and in fact uh, in 2019 as well when covid happened and the interview shifted online most of the colleges gave up on the cat uh, VAT thing so you do not know the process as of now and it would not make sense for you to invest time in it at the moment So how to maintain the flow after getting 50, 60 marks in marks. So I'd say that that should be a motivation that you're not getting the marks that you're aspiring for and you see the potential in yourself and that is how you should be able to maintain the flow, work harder each day than the last one. That should be it. You just have to keep that you can do it because everybody else is just the same. Nobody is less or more intelligent than you. It's just a question of hard work. Um, so let's uh, sort of uh, wait and put these on hold and I'll ask everybody else to please not hesitate. You can send in your questions. We'll take them up after a couple of minutes again. Uh, that way we can keep the conversation going. So the last thing we talked about, Varnika, was when you said that um, you just, you basically tried to increase the time that you put in and you want to make sure that you, you didn't compromise on less time regardless of you know, wherever you stood level, that's one thing that you made sure you did. Now, uh, when you, after you had put in, when you had put in the extra effort, there'd be some expectation um, in terms of maybe mock scores or accuracy or 
some some that be some metric through which be measuring uh, where you stand right what was that metric for you so uh, very honestly as i mentioned that when you uh, attempt a question and you leave it midway after some you know after doing some initial calculations and some initial understanding you just don't know you feel lost and you don't know how to move forward so in various questions that i was attempting during my 2019 preparation i remember at one point even after a lot of efforts in the these lr sections and the questions that i mentioned i was not able to get through like i was not able to understand what the question is asking and even if i was attempting i was doing it wrong every time so uh, i understood that this is something that even despite you know such long working hours and such hard work i'm not able to get through so the metric that i set for myself is definitely to see that at which point that i'm am i losing contact with the question so if i'm not able to understand the question that is the first point of contact then if i'm doing the cal equ calculations uh, equations right that is the second point if the third point is if i am able to you know solve it correctly the calculations are correct i mean i am not doing any silly mistake and then finally is if i am not seeing the option correct correctly so that happened with me many times i used to get the correct answer but then i used to you know goof up in the options ticking selecting and all of that so those were the four major touch points that i understood and then for every question i understand if from my previous preparation if i am able to transition to the next touch point or not so. absolutely um thanks for that varnika and whenever you uh, worked on improving yourself on any of the touch point let's say you goof up the options and then you'd make a, a proactive attempt to not do that next mock or you know practice to so that that doesn't happen whatever input you put to prevent it the next time and you let you make those mistakes um did that happen and if yes uh, how did you cope with that okay so sure i think that everyone who prepares for anything at any moment will faces this that despite efforts and despite having an understanding as to where am i going wrong i still go wrong and it is then that we need to realize that it might be due to because even though we have a uh, you know fair idea about why this is happening but we are goofing up in terms of pressure because sometimes when we know too much we goof up it's not always the case that we don't know that is why we goof up so you have to have that calm during the exam so i used to get anxious in my mock exams as well and that is why i you know uh, ruined a lot of them so it, in addition to having understanding and having knowledge it's also essential to keep that calm at the moment so because you have to believe that whatever you have studied so talking about myself all throughout my preparation i have been very anxious like even before my examinations my tests my mocks my school exams and all of that i have been very anxious but on the day itself on the exam day i have made it a point that i reached that stage wherein i understand that nothing can be done now and nothing can be done to better what i already have so i have to trust in myself and that is why i think that the performance has actually gone up, gone up in the final exam rather than the practice sessions so that that uh, mentality is very much important to the you know to your approach of taking the test rather than your uh, so it's high chances that you will goof up if you do not have the correct mindset varnika wo jo 2 hour duration uh, the entire time when you're actually sitting and taking the mock um, sometimes a lot of thoughts are totally unrelated to the mock uh, would pop in while we're at it filing which means it happened with you your day also so is there anything you've learned about your journey about how to manage that so i'd say especially in the rc section those paragraphs those comprehensions are so thought provoking for some reason that i don't know i remember when sitting in the exam room and that was about some social policy and something and i just you know had a look around myself the examination center and it was such in shambles that i realized that why do such social policies exist in the first place if they are not able to implement it so that happens and it's completely normal to it but you have to you know just minimize that uh, of attention time back to your uh, comprehension or whatever study at hand so it's okay to have very different thoughts but at the same time you have to realize that this is not something that you have to think at the moment so it can be thought of once the exam is over you can go out of the exam room and think whatever you have to but not at the moment 
in fact i do that there are some lrdi sets also where you know they'd send you to a trip to goa and they'd uh, <laughs> but i think it'll be full if we think it in this way that i'll go home and think about that trip basically <laughs> let me just focus on what's being asked at this point exactly in fact as i mentioned that some reading comprehensions are really thought provoking so i used to make a note as to what do i have to study after going back to home, back home with us though the comprehensions that they gave are really very nice and you know very advanced and understood right that is how yeah awesome um another quick question i mean let's just um let this put be very honest i can't um, you know sugar coat it in any way lots of aspirants would think do i want to do this in the first place what am i doing why am i preparing for cat and i mean what is this i have questions like these so actually why mbh is not just a question but it's you know that is asked in interviews or placements or anything it it should be answered for yourself and it should be very subjective so each person has a very different understanding of what management is and uh, how why should one be doing an mba what are their previous backgrounds and it is a question of many variables and these variables are very individualistic so before pursuing the course itself you have to talk to people so you cannot decide it for yourself because you don't have the exposure yet you don't know what goes in a b school you don't know what career options do you have after a management course so you have to talk to as many people as you can and there will be some people who will not respond to your messages which is very obvious and you have and it's you know you should approach people not just from your uh, background your similar background or similar profile but you should be out on a uh, you should be looking out for a very diverse set of individuals who can give you a very different insight into the entire process and then you can take a fair judgment that way it will be not only beneficial for your own self but also you'll be able to you know have a, have a very holistic understanding of the of your career beforehand and do not just do it because everybody else is doing it because you you know that decision will pan out very wrong in the long run so you have to have a very uh, clear understanding of what you are getting yourself into so because, because there will be many times that you will be forced and you will feel like giving up so if you are not well prepared and you have not understood the position correctly then it will be very easy for you to you know just boggle down under that pressure varnika what do you is a mindset that um, people in competitive exams matlab likhai you know studies in college uh, semester or course completion so everybody does in their college also what do you think is the mindset that competitive exam like cat demands so any competitive exam it, one should know that it's all relative so if you think the paper was difficult it was difficult for all if you think that the questions were too like too complex it was complex for all and if you believe that you have worked hard enough and more importantly do not you know compare yourself against anyone so if you think that x person has done it so well he has attempted so many questions and he has always been the topper of my batch uske to accuracy itni thi uska to sahi ho raha hai sab usse farak nahi padta hai matlab you have to understand ki it's very relative even you might not have worked to the best of your potential and the other people are able uh, but if you not have worked best uh, uh, to your potential the other people might not have been able to do so as well so in competitive exams also there's a lot of competition in india there's no denying this fact so you have to you know correct your mindset that i have always been the best in everything that i pursue that which would necessarily mean that i had performed good here as well which might not be the case because there are immense there is immense potential in the country and there are just so smart candidates out there so you you have to you know understand that it's okay to no, uh, not be the best but you have to work to the best of your potential you know that just reminded me of this very um, famous thing michael jordan said so was very famous basketball player and he would say i don't go back home and compete with other players i just compete with myself and capability so i think that 
something similar um, and that could like help us not get bogged down whenever we get scores because only we know what we're capable of and if we look at it from that lens sort of inspire us to make sure we just hit the ceiling of our capability wherever that basically takes us but yeah really thanks for that and i also remember you once shared with me that when you were preparing for the second time uh, you were competing with yourself uh, the score you got the first time 99.6 Six and you would feel very upset when you didn't even match that score. Um, so in these times, what did you tell yourself that propelled you complete your preparation and actually go and take cat again, finish it off, and you know make IMK? What what kept you going with this sense of failure uh, for competing with yourself? So very rightly so. Uh, when I appeared for the next year, I did not perform as well as I did in 2019. So from 99.76, I came down to 99.58. And it was just because, uh, sorry, 98.55, my bad. So uh, just a second, let me rename myself. Uh, so yes, I was saying, so I had out, so I had failed in terms of that. And I knew it from the very, uh, I knew it from the point when I left uh, the colleges that I got in 2019 that this would be a challenge for me that I had set for myself because it wasn't easy to score that much again. And it, it is more or less a chance, uh, it, it is more or less based on luck as well, considering that is very unpredictable. So during my preparation as well, I was not very much, uh, you know, I was quite confident that I'll be able to score at least this much because. Um, my concepts at here have been doing well and I did not used to give much value to the mock, mock scores. So even though they were uh, declining or they were kind of stagnant or whatever was the pattern, I was not very much uh, concerned about it because I was pretty confident that I have a fair share of understanding and I'll be able to crack it through. So I was already working on it and I knew that what I had to work on because I had this one leverage of one year preparation as well. So I was pretty confident. And then when the D day on the D day, uh, when I appeared for the exam and that two hour pattern, I was, you know, midway in the exam, I was just perplexed. I felt like I have already, you know, booked up the uh, VARC section and I don't know much. I'm already weak in DILR. Now, um, I shouldn't have left that exam. I shouldn't have left that college at that moment. And all of these thoughts just boggled me down so much that I was not able to concentrate very well on the exam. So that is that is what translated into my DILR score pretty evidently. And that it was, you know, it shot down to 77 percentile and I wasn't even able to clear the cutoff. So in the, the time that I took to reassemble myself in the quant section. So while I was already into the quant section, I realized that it's no use, you know, cribbing about experiment. So it's gone, it's done. And if I think that I'll be able to make it through, I have to work hard right then and there. There. So that, that period of DILR section when I was having all of these thoughts and then I was using my own thinking to mend those thoughts to, you know, emerge out stronger. So that pretty much reflected in my score that I was able to uh, score well in VARC and Quant, but I grouped up in DILR. So I, as I already uh, highlighted previously, that mindset is the only thing that matters most on the exam day and not the preparation and knowledge because you have it anyway. Just one day of more preparation wouldn't have that uh, utility into your uh, entire knowledge set, but mindset is what matters. So, yeah. And thanks for being so honest about it, Varnika, because I understand it's quite vulnerable, but uh, you've shared your entire thought process very kindly. And this is one place for everybody and I learn from and understand, you know, how we think shapes what we do in that very moment. I remember speaking with another cat topper, said very similar, VRC didn't go very well, uh, very confused, got very upset actually, and started calculating, I won't reach my percentile goal basically, because I've done X, Y, Z. And with that disappointment that come, that calculation uh, couldn't do well, you know, the later two sections as well, as well as they could otherwise, without all these thoughts. So um, I think that we all could, uh, what do you think? It. We all could practice forgive ourselves uh, during the exam, even in mocks. What do you say? You know, if we mistake, if we know, okay, this section isn't going well as it did, we could just start forgiving ourselves. It's completely fine. <laughs> forgive yourself and then go to the next section. 
you know uh, i would say i would just want add one thing to here also you you have to forgive yourself you do not have to judge yourself during the exam that is one thing but secondly while you are attempting in giving the question giving the exam you should be very excited about the questions so once you read a paragraph if you think that oh my god it's too difficult i don't know anything about sociology what i am going to do and all of that then you will obviously you will uh, you know perform much lower than you could otherwise so in addition to having a in i would say that have a very ex- excited approach towards thing you when you begin a paragraph you will read it by thinking that oh my god this is something that i don't know and this is something that i sh- i would have a little idea about by the end of this paragraph and while you are reading it you understand that this is this is how i have never thought so when you think like this these things actually the brain uh, very proactively adapts to that and is able to you know interpret it line by line which helps you in answering the questions so also in uh, di and lr para- so especially in lr what i used to do i used to get really excited about understanding that how much can they twist the question so it's a simple seating arrangement question how many tricks and you know different uh, they are they are just using those language to change the entire understanding so it used to excite me to understand that what mastermind are they putting into one simple question to make us not attempt it so that should be your approach towards questions absolutely thanks so much this this is great thanks so much for sharing this varnika i think this is a good time for us to uh, take a pause here and take up the uh, live questions that everybody has been asking you see them on chat you could uh, pick them up them out and answer them okay so to uh, about the question that i am not able to solve questions in mocks but when i solve them after the test i am able to solve them easily so i think that should be a motivation to you know understand that as i mentioned previously as well that you should be able to understand that where is the touch point that you are losing contact with so if you feel that you are able to uh, solve up to this point in the actual exam then just have a analysis that why am i not going forward what is that one thing that struck me later and not at the exact exam time and next time onwards if this is happening for 10 questions make sure it happens for only 8 questions or so uh next question is can i go from 90 to 99 in just 2 months from now so i would say that it's only one month left now and very honestly it would be a little challenging to go from 90 to 99 but if this 90 is based on mock scores and 99 on percentile scores uh, then you are just comparing apples to oranges so if you do not have if you have not attempted the actual cat yet then do not compare might be possible that 90 score 90 percent in mocks will translate to a 99 percent final exam then our uh, next question is how to improve critical reasoning based rc questions so i'd say that my funda and my mitra to reading comprehensions has definitely been to interpret it line by line so as you go Uh, as you go reading on reading a paragraph you have to understand that what is one paragraph trying to say so once you once you read it superficially like just from the uh, just read, do not read between the lines just have a very uh, superficial reading and then see the questions like are they very straight forward are they a little tricky what are the options like and if you understand that okay this uh this question might need an inference from the other paragraphs of the uh, paragraph uh, comprehension then you have to read it very thoroughly and have a you know linking between the paragraphs otherwise if the questions are not that complex you can just read and understand which para it is coming from and then read thoroughly that paragraph only so it will save you a lot of time and extra reasoning um varnika when uh, you were critical reasoning questions uh, on the rc part of it were you okay with those or did you uh, struggle with critical reasoning questions particularly so i w- i would say that i w- struggled in vrc initially because i was able to understand the crux of the comprehension but i was not able to you know accurately mark the answers because somewhere they are very confusing and seem similar so you tend to mark a question so which might not be correct so later during the later stage of the preparation i understood that you know you have to eliminate the options 
so you so i don't think that i did any particularly any special preparation for critical reasoning as such but it was my overall strategy for reading competitions um i'm sorry if the question could be a little philosophical in nature but um i'll um, i'll trust you to answer it as you deem fit what do you think about failures in general all right this seems like an interview now <laughs> so uh failures i'd say that everyone gets them it's just the perspective so what might seem failure to me might not seem a failure to anyone else it's just a dip if you see the entire learning curve or entire you know hard work curve It, there will be many times when you have worked hard for something and you may not be able to achieve it. So there will be a dip in your efforts, but you have to make sure that you do not let that reflect in your own hard work. So definitely, there have been times when I was rejected in the interview or when I wanted to get something but I didn't, and and in that moment I was so frustrated with myself that I don't want to study anymore. You know, all these efforts they're not getting translated into what I want, and there are people who are getting it. and i'm not getting it and then this whole comparison thing comes up ki yaar sab ka hota hai mujhe kuch nahi aata hai <laughs> so i think that is very normal to feel but in that after taking a break of some time as much as you want to and as much as it takes you to you know bring back the normal and healthy attitude towards studies in general it is then then you have to resume your work on it so you will halt for some time and it's understandably so So, but just try to emerge out stronger. Do not let that impact you. Because if everybody is able to get everything that they want, then there is no competition at all, and there'd be like it's a perfectly utopia world that doesn't exist. So it's fine. It's bound to happen. So really, thank you so much for that, uh, Varnika. Now let's just, uh, before I ask you to sort of come up and you know share uh, you the main pointers that you'd like every. and to know at this point before we go there uh, i want to quickly ask you about um, how is it going for you at imk what's going on and what's the experience like and how different uh, from your cat prep experience like to actually being there all right that is a very good question and that question could go on for the next second minutes <laughs> so first of all i'd say that it's very different from your usual preparation or usual studies as a matter of fact so coming from a corporate background i already had an understanding of what job culture is how you perform in a job but mba is very much different from it because there's a lot of work there's a lot of deadlines and there's a lot of pressure you are put into so unarguably you learn to prioritize things you learn to understand that you know at some point of time what do you have to do so if you have multiple things to do at hand you will choose one and one work hard on it and also you realize that it's not important to do everything at once so you will miss out on things and as the you know the fomo thing that is very prevalent inside a b school so if, on a very daily basis on a very momentary basis you will find people doing something that you are not a part of and you will feel like ki ye bhi kar raha mai kyun nahi kar raha mere cv ka kya hoga mera to job hi nahi lagega to <laughs> so what if you are already feeling down in your preparation trust me there are going to be many challenges in a b school where you feel like you are not up to the mark you do not have the potential or you know you and in those moments if you think um if you take these th uh, things on your heart you will boggle down under pressure so these this chat preparation is just a step stone and foundational stone to make you strong mentally to make you bear that pressure so take this as you know first step to your b school journey no matter which b school you get into this will always come you hand come handy and the two three months at imk have been really great so i just recently got finished with my term one and i'm so relieved <laughs> just so relieved and i'm sure that whoever you will talk to they also make you uh, understand that how term one really is so i am just glad that it's so over Awesome! You sound like a happy free bird, but I think another term coming up. So, <laughs> no, I'm excited for that. <laughs> All right, awesome. Oh, Nika. So, um, uh, I just quickly um check if uh, we can take up more live question at this point, and otherwise we just go to uh, the three bit. Okay, so um, somebody is very curious about your. Thought, Varnika, for Cat Twenty Twenty, could share that. 
अबाउट माय योर कैट 2020 का स्लॉट आफ्टरनून स्लॉट ओके ओके ग्रेट अम सो अम देयर समबडी अम हुज आस्किंग देयर वी गेस व्हाट देयर एट एलआरडीआई सो अम एट any 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 thoughts uh, things you did at this point to improve la di so i think uh, for di particularly i was very weak in it at it and uh, i although i have i was pretty much fast in calculations but i used to get very scared by those numbers so my first uh, advice would be to understand that it's not difficult it's just lengthy so the the formulas applied or the you know the understanding would not be that difficult so i try to attempt di questions now as much as you can because they do not need much preparation they just need you to get over that fear of numbers so do that now and for lr i would say that do not focus much on the really difficult and advanced portions because that is not much value addition at this point of time considering that you have only one month left so if it's better to have a full cooked meal rather than a half cooked meal So work on things that you are already familiar with, and try to do as many questions as you can at this point. Absolutely. One thing: Are you at home? Are you at time? Okay, where? Home. On why? You 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 any time soon? You see go yourself on campus? Yeah, yeah. We are hoping that we get on uh, in campus by this month itself. So they are calling people in slots. Okay, okay. All right. Awesome. Great. So hopefully you will be called soon. Uh, <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> okay varnika so today's conversation we really wanted everybody to understand how they could balance out uh, their preparation by not getting bogged down by the challenges the failures um, all the things that affect us um, you know when they come our way so i would just like for you to share your um, the two three so i'll just make it very very easy for you one thing was your perspective on failures the second thing you was uh, what you did when you saw some topics some mistakes you were making again and again second bit and the final is an overall belief about working the uh, to you know your goals basically given intelligence stint okay so the first thing that failures that we talked about so definitely when i scored much lesser percentage in my second attempt in comparison to the first it was a big failure in terms of what i had expected of myself and it was really difficult to understand that Oh, I am not able to do it again, and I I did not even receive calls from major B schools because I did not cut the uh, cut off. So that is bound to happen, and I did not expect it. So, but obviously, I was shattered. I took my break of some time. I was like, "Ki nahi, mujhe jaane nahi, mujhe MBA nahi karna." But but it's okay to have that you know rant session for some time before you emerge out stronger. So treat your failures as your time. It's okay to fail. take your time understand it what how much uh, time it takes you so it's very subjective but at the end of it you should you know resume working on it because giving up isn't an option because you had thought of doing an mba in the first place because of some reason stick to that reason till the end of it till the end of your preparation till the end of your two years at any b school so have your thoughts and priorities very clear and even if you fail at it either way you will succeed it's a way, success is a very subjective definition so for you it might at this moment it might be getting into an iim or getting clearing the cat with a good percentage but that is just a short term goal that you're setting for yourself think in the long run have a holistic understanding think that what you had have expected out of yourself at the end of an mba and how will a college help you that so there is a lot you know there's a big road ahead do not just restrict yourself to a to an exam or to a score so do not let anything come in between and uh, secondly the questions that i was working hard on but i was failing again and again so you need to know the threshold point where you have to give up on those questions so you cannot just keep working on it and waste your time and not get tangible results out of it so if you think that you have already worked hard enough hard enough on it and you are not able to you know just move to that next level and cross that level just leave it right there and then utilize your time leverage it on any other type of questions that you feel are lagging and that can be worked upon because as an individual as a preparation as someone who is preparing for a cat you know the uh, you know different concepts you have understanding that 
what which can be done easily which are difficult to do and which is easier for you so it's your decision you have to take it at the moment because there's not much time left and while speaking so much i forgot what was the third point i i knew this was this would happen so i have written it down <laughs> first was failure can you said how you coped up with mock scores and all those lows and dips and third was you said that you talked about how intelligence could basically be uh, but uh, you can increase the equation uh, by the other variable sure. so i i personally believe that intelligence and hard work go hand in hand so you will meet no one who is very intelligent and does not do any work to reach the success so it's very it's like a you know combination of your intelligence and hard work and while all of us have the same intelligence level it's only the hard work that decides the equation so also at the beginning of any venture you should feel like the learning curve is only going to go upwards and onwards there's no coming down from it so even if you're not able to crack the cat this year that learning curve that you have obtained through this preparation will help if you go for preparation next year it will help you there and if you go for uh, you know pursuing an mba from any other college at this moment it will also help you in, in throughout that journey as well so this this preparation that you are doing is, is not just limited to this exam and this has been true for all your achievements till date your 10th year 12th your graduation th- that those years of hard work have made you who you are and will continue to do so in the uh, going forward so don't, you know just you have to keep this positive ma- positive mindset that it's only going to go upwards and there's nothing that can you know stop you from learning new things beautiful varnika thank you so much um this is one of the very um, different pieces of you know conversations kind of conversations we do usually it's about preparation strategy but i really wanted to share with our audience the mindset of somebody who's achieved what they achieved because that help uh, you know put into perspective everything so tomorrow if i score low i'm going to think about it in a different way because i've seen how you think about it and i find that help personally speaking and i i hope this is the kind of value that we've added for everybody who watched this conversation i want to thank varnika for taking the time and very honest and vulnerably to sharing your thoughts and you know what went inside your i want to thank the audience for bear with my poor internet connection <laughs> still sticking i hope it was helpful and um i'll see you guys uh, next next thursday varnika i want to wish you the best of luck for your next semester and thank you once again thank you ocean and team inside i am for having me here because it really helps when you are able to share what goes through your in your mind because there are a lot of many there are a lot of people who come to me and ask for preparation strategies and i cannot really define it for someone because it's a very subjective journey and also it like i have been there i know that when you are at that stage you only think of certain things in a certain way and you're not able to see that entire you know jigsaw puzzle falling into place but once you meet new people you talk to different people you gain that perspective and i have been you know working on gaining this perspective from the people i meet and therefore i'd like to translate that knowledge and learning to others so thank Absolutely. you for having me here thank you so much once again thanks varnika bye bye